the in lab, we're going to do uh, coffee cup calorimetry. So it's constant pressure calorimetry, which just means it's you know under um, the atmospheric pressure, constant atmospheric pressure. We're not changing the pressure at all. And so you're going to have a setup that looks like this. You'll have two coffee cups, very expensive. So make sure you don't throw the coffee cups away. We're going to use those again. So you have two, that's a joke. We have two coffee cups. Um, no, we're really not going to throw them away though. They're not very expensive, but they make a very good uh, coffee cup calorimeter. So two cups kind of nested together. And then instead of having a glass stirrer, we're going to have a magnetic stir bar that'll go down in here and it'll stir everything for you constantly. And instead of a um, thermometer, I think we're going to use, we may be using the LabQuest units or we'll have some kind of thermometer here. And what we're going to do is measure the temperature change. So we have three, three steps to the lab. The first one, you're going to take hot water and cold water mix them together and calculate the calorimeter constant. So really it's like how much heat is being absorbed by the coffee cup itself in this process of just mixing water. The second one, you're gonna measure the heat of dissolution. So you're gonna dissolve something. We're gonna take sodium hydroxide pellets and put it in water, stir it up and measure the temperature change and relate that to the heat of dissolution. And then for a reaction, we're gonna take sodium chloride and, um, or, yeah, sodium chloride? Sodium hydroxide, sorry. We're gonna make sodium chloride. Sodium hydroxide, aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous hydrochloric acid. You're going to put those together. They undergo a reaction. You're going to make salt, spoiler alert, and you're going to measure the heat of the reaction. So actually what we're, what we're measuring in the process is the heat of the solution. And then from that, we're going to relate it to the heat of dissolution or the heat of the reaction. Um, and if we're not considering the, the uh, calorimeter constant here, just for a second, the amount of heat that um, is, so suppose you do this reaction and it gives off a whole bunch of heat. That heat's going to go where? It's, it's going into um, the solution. And then what you're measuring is how much heat is in the solution or how much, you know, how, to, how the temperature change of the solution. And then you can relate that to the heat of the reaction. So Q equals MC delta T. Uh, you basically have two Qs here. You have the Q of the solution and then you have the heat of the, of the Q of the reaction. Uh, and they're just opposite each other because if, if you didn't have anything being absorbed by the calorimeter, then everything given off by the reaction, all the heat given off by the reaction is going to be absorbed by the solution as, as well as the, the calorimeter. I don't have that in this equation. Um, because for we'll, we'll see the calorimeter constant in, um, in lab, but here we kind of simplify it a little bit. This is a simplified form. Um, and so imagine you're ha you have this situation. So you take, and again, we're in a coffee cup calorimeter. So we take 30 grams of a solid and you heat it in a test tube to 100 degrees Celsius, and that's, bo and that's boiling water, and then uh, you add it to the co coffee cup calorimeter, and that coffee cup already has 40 grams of colder water. Uh, you measure the temperature before and after, and the water temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 29.5, so it just goes up a little bit, which kind of makes sense. So you're taking this hot solid, you put it in cold water, and then the heat from the solid is going to be released into the, the water that's in the coffee cup, and then that's going to increase the temperature uh, until until when? When does heat stop flowing? Heat's going to stop flowing when the uh, when it's reached equilibrium. When the heat of the solid equals the heat of the the water. Once all that has flowed, there's no more difference in temperature. Then um, the heat that's when it stops. And so that's your final temperature for both for both the solid as well as the water in the cup. And what they want us to do here is find the specific heat capacity of the solid. And once you know that, you can kind of identify what the unknown solid was based on its heat capacity. Because we had a little chart before that said, you know, aluminum has this specific, specific heat capacity or whatever metal you're dealing with. Iron has one. Everybody has a unique specific heat capacity. You can identify your solid based off that. So if you assume all the heat is gained by the water, so we're not even going to worry about like the calorimeter itself absorbing heat in this problem. We're just simplifying it. So assume that all the, all the heat lost equals all the heat gained. Right? So all the heat that's lost by the, by the metal, by the solid, will be gained by the water. Can you figure out what the heat capacity of the solid is? And they give you the heat capacity of the water. So I'm going to set up like, we're going to use Q equals MC delta T again. And I'm going to set it up so you have um, that Q leaving equals the Q that's entering. All right, so we have um, the Q of the solid. Right, so that's, so what do we need? Basically we're saying the Q of the solid is negative the Q of the water, All right? And what do we know about Q? We have um, M, C, delta T. So how do we find delta T? We need a T final, T initial, and then we can find the, the change. So we have T final, we have T initial, we 
We have our delta T. Same thing over here for the water. We have M, ugh, C, T, F, T, I, and delta T. Right, so basically I'm, I'm, I'm basically solving Q equals MC delta T equals Q equals MC delta T, right? And those Qs are going to be the same. Or Sorry, I have a negative sign here. So if one is positive, the other one has to be negative. If one is giving off heat, then the other one has to be gaining the heat. Um, so you can, you can switch these negative signs. It really doesn't matter. One of your delta Ts is going to be positive. One of your delta T is going to be negative, And then your temperature change is going to cancel out the sign. Now that we have this kind of set up, we're going to go through the problem again and pull out all the numbers and try to fill, figure out where they fit in. So I have a 30 gram uh, sample of solid. Okay, so that's the mass of my solid. Grams. Um, it's heated in a test tube to 100 degrees Celsius. So that's the initial temperature of, of the solid. 100 degrees Celsius. And then I take that because um, it's boiling water, I take it and I, I don't put the, I take the metal out and I put it in the coffee cup calorimeter which contains 40 grams of water. All right, so this is the water in the coffee cup. I have 40 grams and that's going to absorb some of that heat. The initial temperature was 25 and the final temperature went up. It was 29.5. Now we also know that why, when does the temperature, when, when does the um, heat stop flowing when the temperatures are the same? So this is the final temperature of that. And then my heat capacity for water is 4.18 joules per gram degree C. And I don't know what this is. This is what I'm trying to find. So I can find the change in temperature for both of these, right? Final minus initial. This is going to be 29.5 minus 25, which is 4.5 degrees Celsius. And this one's going to be final is 29.5 minus 100. 0, 0, which is what 70.5 negative 70.5 degrees Celsius okay so those are my temperature changes one's positive one's negative somebody's giving up heat the other one's gaining the heat and now I can set up my equation right I have Q equals basically MC Delta T is Q and that equals MC Delta T over here right the Q of the solid or negative Q of the solid is equal to Q of the water I think I had it like that that's fine. So the mass of the uh, the solid, let's look at this. I'm going to fill in my numbers here. I have 30 grams here. C is what I'm trying to find. My delta T is negative 70, right? So I have a negative here. Drop my negative. That's how my negatives cancel out. Um, you shouldn't end up with a negative specific heat capacity. If you did that, it's just that you probably messed up the temperature over here a little bit or, or the initial equation. Over here, I have 40 grams. My C is 4.18, that's in joules per gram degree C, and my delta T is 4.5 degrees Celsius. All right, so you can see my grams cancel here, my C, my Celsius cancels here. So on this side, I can I can multiply all that through, and I should get like 752.4 um, joules, right? If I look at my units, my grams cancel, oops, my Celsius cancels, and then over here on this side, I have two one one five um and my units are grams degrees celsius and then um, my c is what i'm looking for so to solve for c i'm just going to divide both sides by the two one one five grams degree c two one one five grams degree c and i end up with that c specific heat capacity is about 0 0.36 joules per gram degree C, 355, depending on how many. I think I cut off some sig figs. Now we have two, two here. That's fine. So that's how we can apply this equation. So basically solving two of these at the same time, two Q equals MC delta T problems. Um, the amount of heat given off by the by the solid equals the amount of heat being absorbed by the water. And so that's why we set those equal to each other and then just went through the problem to figure out what variables go where. So there's a whole bunch of homework problems that look just like this, so I would work through those too.